Hello and a very warm welcome to today's session brought to you by Team Grade Up. I hope you all are doing really well. Through the course of this lecture, we will start with a very important crash course, which is not just crucial from your net exam perspective, but also from understanding literature in the modern light. See, whenever we are talking about, uh, you know, the literature, the British writers that we've been looking at, like Elizabethan age, Jacobian age, uh, when we're talking about Spencer, Milton, Chaucer, or when we're talking about the development of prose writings, all those are essential for getting a background knowledge into literature but you know what is happening in the 20th century when we are talking about literature that can only be understood when we are evaluating modern literature and modernism is an extremely crucial aspect 20th century writings are very important because they are inaugurating the new types of writings that are flourishing they're telling you about the new kinds of literatures that have become very very popular so whenever we are talking about modern age do remember uh, that you know this is a very crucial critical period from your entrance point of view. This is an extremely crucial era also for setting up the impetus of literature. Your Nobel Prizes are starting from this particular age. This age is envisaging. It's looking at even when we are talking about historical events, a lot of history, whatever, uh, you know, we read in the modern times is actually coming from this period, the two world wars, the the various kinds of other wars that were taking place in the modern time, they are, of course, becoming crucial. So we will be looking at this topic. Of course, there'll be a couple of lectures that we will be uh, trying to uh, review modernism, 20th century writings. And this is very crucial. You know, I have seen students do a lot of British writers after Romantic Age, uh, even though I don't endorse selective study, but still they clear up their net paper because this is a very crucial chunk. This is a chunk from where you're getting a majority of your questions as well, the 20th century literature. Okay, and postmodernism, of course, you get so many questions related to postmodernism, postcolonialism. That is, of course, the backbone backbone of your paper, right? Let's very quickly get started. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Uh, there is a Satya, there is Suketi, there's Sahiba, there's Sushil, Lakshmi, Pratibha, or uh, Rabia, Tabasam, Munmun. Rabia, you've joined from here, or is it a different Rabia that we are having today? Okay, uh, there's Chandan, there's Aman, there's Priyanka, Kanchan, Tiasa, Kam. Yeah, Chandni. Uh, <clears throat> wow, I love how Chandni. You know, Chandni always gives us that chakte moment. You know, then uh, when they're introducing, I'm this, I'm so and so, I'm from here. So Chandni would always tell us, I'm Chandni from Jharkhand, which is so good, huh? All right. Uh, there's Anjali. There's Rupam. There's Akarshan. There's Alisa. There's Gulista. There's Sana. Man, uh, there's Mansi. Hi, Mansi. Uh, Adbit uh, is there. Imam, Nikita, Bharti, Sukan, Sukanta, Tenzing, Nishan, Pradeep, Chandan. Uh, okay. Thank you. Um, yes, Chami, I've read that. I've read that part. Okay. Um, there's Saista. There's Madhavi. There's Dhanlakshmi, Noha, Divya, Nishant, Gulista. Good evening, Bache. Good evening. Let's see at the classroom platform how many of you have joined. I hope all of you are not sleeping today. Okay, there is Anand, there's Rachna, there's Amol, there's Mihir, there's Sahila, Shashi, Ananya, uh, Shruti, Sangeeta, Amina, uh, Kuhu, Preeti, um, there's Aditi, Jotsna. So sorry. I was just eating almonds before this class, and that's the reason. Um, I'm good, Jotsna. Thank you so much for asking. Hi, Nargis. Um, Okay, great, fantastic. Let's very, very quickly get started. Let's very, very quickly get started. Um, all right, all right, all right. Let's let's start with today's session. So today will be devoted to modernism. You can collect all your PDFs. Uh, okay, uh, I I'm so sorry for the delay, but you know your short videos are almost ready. You will start receiving some of your short videos will be available on the Telegram chat platform. Some of the short short videos will be available on the YouTube platform, and some will be uh, curated on the Studio Library app also for you. So you will be receiving your short videos. Give us another day or two. They will be all active. They'll be very helpful. It's it's just that you know we were trying to incorporate tricks with those uh, in those videos because I think tricks will make your job a lot more simpler. That is what we were planning to do. This is of course a schedule for your night school, and I've told you that from eighth March onwards we'll be having certain special workshops also organized on your night school platform, about which we will of course keep you posted. This is the schedule that we will be following for your seven pm classes. I will update the schedule also. 
so don't worry about it okay let's very quickly get started and before we start with the quiz let me just uh, you know adjust my screen so that none of you are able to watch the answers right some of you were able to see the answers last time so let's hope for the best and let's hope that you know today you are not able to see the answers then i will readjust my screen again okay all right let's very quickly get started let's very very quickly get started i hope now you will not be able to see the answers this is the first question this is the first question that you are having okay um <clears throat> okay lichi adds uh, in the sense Okay, I didn't understand. Anyway, yeah, what is the right answer here? The most notable achievement in Jacobian prose was the most notable achievement in Jacobian prose was. What is the right answer here? Good evening, Nasreen Shuli. Good evening, child. What is the right answer here? Very good, very good. See, whenever we are talking about the Jacobian period, I've told you multiple times that you know Jacobian age is very important. There are three important pillars of Jacobian period that you have to look at. First is, of course, Ben Johnson. Ben Johnson. is the first important playwright who is giving importance to authorship he is the person because of whom we see that there is a trend of popularizing authorship authorship is becoming extremely crucial authorship is becoming very popular people have started understanding that you know if this is my work i should acknowledge it as my own otherwise before that you know people were only worried during the elizabethan age people were only worried about our elizabethan stage people were worried about gaining money the the drama was a means of survival for them it was more like a job that they were performing but when we are talking about ben johnson ben johnson is getting the idea of authorship in uh, the entire tradition and that is how you see uh, the folio edition coming of shakespeare that is where we see a lot of people start naming their plays right and remember yesterday during the night school we did a question in kula bula in kula bula or in kula bulam is a term that is given to all the writings that were printed that were printed no manuscripts only printed prior to 1501 so ever since the printing press came till 1501 all the works that were getting printed were called incula bulum all the works that were printed not manuscripts were called incula bulum because we don't know who has written it we don't know the authority of most of the text we don't know they're all anonymous writings but ben johnson asserted it's my hard work more than money i require authorship to be given and also ben johnson was a person who is getting the masks over here the masks tradition is becoming very very popular right we can clearly see that the tradition of the masks is becoming extremely popular the tradition of the masks is becoming very very common and remember when we were talking about university wits we had spoken about john lilly john lilly was the person john lilly was the person who was incredible who was incredible at producing court masks he was producing court masks for the elite audiences so similarly ben johnson was also trying to get an access to the elite uh, cream layer and that is reason he was preparing you know masks were always prepared mostly for the courtiers for the courtiers that is what was happening and sons of ben were imitators of ben or the hack writers who were purely imitating ben johnson's comedy of humors then of course we are having john webster john webster's revenge tragedies becoming extremely popular webster trying to tell you the corrosion of the courtiership that had taken place during this era the historical event which is important during the jacobian age 1605 1605 the guy fox plot the guy fox plot which was an attempt to kill james the first it was an attempt to kill james the first that is becoming important okay very good yes 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 upis is the right answer rahul that's absolutely good hi apriti hi prena okay uh prena uh, there is an hpm class but i think it's not for your batch maybe it's it's for the concluding batch so don't worry relax a little okay it is for maybe it's not for the new batch it's for the old batch because i think it is their uh, last few classes which are there okay so you can take a little bit of rest and study so you 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 guys keep on cribbing uh, what you people can do is you can just explore the library we have up updated uploaded a lot of material important material on the library platform and each and every uh, document is like you know pretty bulky 
bulky bulky in the sense more than a few pages so uh, prena you can go through the library in the meantime at 8 o'clock because your batch is not having the class like i have a class with all of you but not with all of you with some of you ओके चलो तो ये दिस इज समथिंग दैट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर मोस्ट ऑफ यू आर एब्सोल्युटली राइट जेम्स बाइबल द ट्रांसलेशन ऑफ द बाइबल द ऑथराइज्ड वर्जन ऑफ द बाइबल इज वेरी वेरी क्रूशियल राइट सो बेन जॉनसन वेबस्टर एंड द वॉर ऑफ थिएटर द वॉर ऑफ थिएटर दैट इज टेकिंग प्लेस द वॉर ऑफ थिएटर इज अ वॉर दैट इज टेकिंग प्लेस बिटवीन डेकर एंड मास्टर ऑन वन हैंड डेकर एंड मास्टर ऑन वन हैंड एंड बेन जॉनसन ऑन द अदर हैंड डेकर एंड मास्टर ऑन वन and and ben johnson on the other hand okay so that is uh, something that you have to keep in mind all right priya it is all available um gulista this is library which is for studio uh, students students who attend the 3 and 8 pm classes so that is like you know a, a a kind of a repository of videos audios as well as pdfs for all of them which will give them a structured reading to their course like that is a part of the like these people are getting it okay so here please keep that in mind but the options are equally important bacon francis bacon introducing the aphoristic style of writing intro introducing or probably properly using the aphoristic style of writing bacon was writing essays inspired by montaigne montaigne the french writer was very important pioneer of writing this different form of prose writing and bacon is of course he's writing for example when we are talking about he's writing writing nova organum remember nova organum new methods he is writing the new atlantis which is an example of utopia he is writing his essays very uh, famous lines some of them like revenge is a kind of a wild justice coming from on revenge on education on multiple things he is writing right and robert burton's an anatomy of melancholy very important work especially so important you know uh, last year um, it was last year only i think right when sushant singh rajput committed suicide people were talking about burton burton was the first person one of the first pioneering person during the elizabethan and the jacobian period to talk about uh, <coughs> talk about kind of a uh, like you know a depression sort of a syndrome where a person is persistently sad where a person starts crying without any reason where a person's state of mind is not very healthy right so burton was one of the first few people to talk about depression and therefore he is very critical for all of us you can actually do a research also on similar lines on similar grounds okay so please remember <clears throat> Jacobian literature is a very short crisp writing period but you get a lot of questions you get questions coming from Jacobian theater you get questions that are asked not just from Jacobian theater <coughs> so sorry but you also get questions but you also get questions that are coming from Jacobian prose writings as well as your metaphysical school of poets metaphysical school of poets so Jacobian period even though it is a very short crisp period from 1603 to 1625 but still this period is very active in terms of literature and remember this will be the last piece where theater will be so active because after that in 1642 theater will be completely abandoned because of the puritans imposing a fine or puritans like you know disbanding theatrical activities completely okay so do keep that aspect in mind all right do keep that aspect in mind do remember this all right yes 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 absolutely absolutely yeah rekha yeah that is right okay so now coming on to this one the court of chancery the court of chancery is a setting in dickens's the court of chancery is a setting in dickens's when we were doing charles dickens in that class also if you just paid attention to things that i had told you you will be able to answer this question let's see at the classroom platform how many of you have been able to answer this question yes very good richa that's right that's right very good very good very good oh okay richa setting no idea okay no problems richa oh shilpa that's so sweet of you ha huh? shilpa very very sweet sahila or all the people all the classroom students who are having a problem all the classroom students who are having a problem accessing the library i would request all of you to just explore your page some of you have been able to find the library there is more material that has been added to the library uh, as we speak probably there is even more material that is getting added like we've given about 10 to uh, 11 handouts which are very important pdfs and a videos also shared over there uh, but please 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 try to explore that page 
age and some students who have accessed it it'll be wonderful if you can help others okay i i think classroom students that's a major doubt that you people are having no it's the end of the world if you don't find the library okay <laughs> okay sneha is very sweet sneha is very very honest okay uh Okay, Aditya is saying that the library still says content would be accessible by nine thirty PM onwards. Okay, then I don't know. See, you know, had I known technology, I would have done like you know wonders on the technological platform. But unfortunately, I'm a little hand tied when it comes to technology, which is sad because all of us like you know then won't have a career in future. Okay, the Court of Chancery is a setting of Dickens's. Most of you have answered it correctly. If you remember, I told you that which work is a criticism of which work is a criticism. If you remember, these were the things that we had discussed. Which work is a criticism of the legal system? Point number one, because Dickens wanted to take a divorce right from his first wife. so you know he was experiencing and otherwise also he saw that the legal system was not very swift and who better than us indians can understand because there are so many pending cases in india right so this is a criticism of the legal system and remember i hope uh, some of you are able to recollect right when we are talking about oscar wilde or at least classroom students you should be able to remember the ballet of reading gaul the ballet of reading gaul is a clear work by oscar wilde which is criticizing the victorian legal system and prison system that even when a person wants to reform even when a person is repentant still that person is suffering still that person is given punishment clearly showing the absence of any sort of proper method of like you know figuring out justice right and here also the only work that is talking about criticism of the legal system point number 1 has got the court of chancery scene point number 2 has got a female protagonist point number 3 is bleak house bleak house is the correct answer as most of you have answered it right bleak house have uh, right Oh, Yogesh, Yogesh, such an angel. But see, Yogesh is telling us. Yogesh is a technical guru. Okay, Yogesh is saying, uh, you know, you have to go path to explore library. Go to syllabus. Uh, he's saying, go to syllabus. Go to the library, uh, and then on the search pocket, you will be able to find it. Okay, then on the search pocket, you will be able to find it. Okay, Yogesh, thank you so much. Yogesh, thank you so much. Yogesh is like this technical pro guru that we are having. So, but she, please remember, Bleak House is the name of the work, right? Bleak House is the name of the work. I will be giving these shorter videos, especially on uh, like you know Dickens, etc. Dickens, George Eliot, all these. I will help you out with soon. Don't worry. Okay. Uh, Oh Rahul, that's so sweet. Rahul, it's not the end till the very uh, like you know till the end of your exam. We are here alive, so feel free to get in touch with us. Any support that you require, let us know. And Rahul, you all will be able to access the library, so don't worry. This is available for all the batches from batch one, two, three, four, because it's it's added later on. So it's available for all of you. You can keep on going through that. And of course, Rahul, please do join us at seven and ten p.m. That because that will be helpful. Okay. All right. So um. Madhvi, I will check it and I will get back to you because I'm a little bad with these technical things and I don't want to give you wrong information. So, but she, I hope it's clear. Bleak House, I will. What I will do is I will help you out with Charles Dickens, for example. Charles Dickens, I know that these are like you know works. Charles Dickens, William Shakespeare, George Eliot, these writers, uh, Thomas Hardy, these writers who are writing a lot of writings, right? Uh, and uh, they're a little difficult to decode. I'll help you with some shorter videos with tricks. Okay, don't worry. Okay. Let's see this question. Let's very very quickly see this question. Which romantic poet coined the famous phrase "spots of time"? So when we are talking about spots of time, who is the person who's coined this? Spots of time was coined by whom? Spots of time was coined by whom? Who is coining spots of time? Who is coining spots of time? Very very quickly. Let's see how many of you are able to answer it. <coughs> That's so sweet, Rahul. That's very sweet of you. Okay. Uh. All right. Yes, 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 yes. Just give me one second. It's very hot. I'm just going to switch on. Oh, one second. Just give me one minute. Oh, just I'll just be back. Okay. When I feel hot, then I switch it on, and then I'm not feeling good. Okay. Anyway. All right. Yeah. What is the right answer? 
Gulista is asking, is it a net question? Yes, Gulista, it is a net question. Okay, it is a net question that we are talking about. All these questions are from your net exam only that I've given you. The problem with my room span is that, you know, it doesn't work at speed number one. It just works at speed number two, which is so sad. <laughs> uh, Lichi, we will be practicing these you know what Lichi? what happens is these are important terms which uh, some of these writers are given giving uh, these are so for example whenever you are doing a proper analysis of romantic age you will always understand these terms you will always come to know about it you know uh, I don't know uh, if some of you had it but when we were doing our graduation we, we would refer to the world view sorry we would refer to the worldview editions now worldview editions had like you know the text and they had the critical essays at the back right uh, and even still when we are teaching college level students that's the book those are the books that we refer to now those critical essays are actually having these kind of terms right when you're doing a critical analysis uh harold bloom for example uh viva publication uh, gets all these english books i think they're barely 70 rupee book each uh but but still right now it's not the time for you to worry about it we will try to cover a majority of these terms okay we will try to cover a majority of these terms see when you are talking about spots of times most of you have answered it correctly let's see at the classroom platform how many of you uh very good nargis has got it thank you so much nargis i'm glad nargis has got the library okay but because you know the number of doubts that I see there are like you know if I'm getting 15 doubts by, from classroom students then uh, 10 doubts are library and some of you are like okay when when are we getting it so I get a little worried looking at that okay now please remember whenever we are talking about spots of time whenever we are discussing about spots of time spots of time is a concept that is associated with Wordsworth okay now uh, you know what is happening what is happening um, a lot of time a lot of time Wordsworth was saying that you know people are worried about where can I connect with God uh, uh, the, the life is absolutely bad uh, we don't really have these times that is when Wordsworth is referring to that is where uh, like you know Wordsworth is actually coming up with this idea and this notion of spots of time okay now uh, essentially uh, like you know when you're talking about uh, spots of time spots of times is like you know this entire concept this entire concept that is associated with the moments of innocence that is associated with your connecting with the nature and finding god in nature right uh, because you know he was really obsessed he was really obsessed with childhood childhood according to wordsworth was the most pure state and childhood for all romantics even for blake it is a song uh, like you know in the songs of innocence childhood is representing innocence childhood is representing something wherein you're very pure you're still pristine you are unadulterated you are immature you are gullible you are naive right and memory um for example a lot of times you know if you if you would have seen even in the the hindu culture for example on janamashtami we have these little little babies whom we make lord krishna why because you know the idea that we have is that in child because they're so innocent they're still uncorrupted they are still together with the uncorrupted world they they, they still have a resemblance of god in it right god in them so here whenever you are talking about whenever you are talking about spots of time this is a concept this is a concept that is given by wordsworth this is a concept that he's talking about when he's discussing his childhood experiences okay when Wordsworth is describing his childhood experiences, his childhood episodes, he's telling us about spots of time. Point number one. Okay, point number one. Second point, Wordsworth always believed, you know, and, and that is a reality. Wordsworth said we don't all have to be uh, like, you know, eligible for the Nobel Prize uh, for peace and love, etc. No, nothing like that. With little act of kindness, with little act of kindness, with little celebrations, little moments, where we uh, where we experienced god where we experienced nature those are really important those are really eminent right those are the spots of times those are the spots of times so spots of times are like you know the incidents the incidents which he was actually experiencing um and you know that is what he's calling as the spots of times and remember he's also really concerned with little acts of kindness he's also yes of course Rake, child is a father of man that's right okay uh <clears throat> okay that's so sweet of you all right uh 
Okay, so do keep that aspect in mind, Sneha is saying something. So, uh, which romantic poet coined the famous phrase, Spots of Time? It is coined by William Wordsworth. Little act of kindness, little acts of kindness, spots of time. These are all terms that are associated with William Wordsworth. Okay, these are all terms that are associated with William Wordsworth. This is something that you have to keep in mind. All right, so do keep that aspect, please. Do remember that. All right, the statement, I think, therefore, I am. Very, very important statement. Very, very simple statement. And who is giving this statement? Uh, yes, Akarshan. Akarshan is asking Wordsworth was the first generation romantic. Yes, Wordsworth was the first generation romantic. Wordsworth, Wordsworth was the first generation romantic. But even though he is living more than the second generation romantics also. He is living more than the second generation romantics also. Uh, so Blake died first generation romantics. Coleridge died. Coleridge also died very uh, late. He died after P.B. Shelley and Keats. Keats died. Byron died. Uh, but Wordsworth died at the age of 1850. And I hope you remember Samuel Rogers rejected poet laureateship. Lord Alfred Tennyson's Annus Mirabilis, 1850, he got the Nobel Prize after him. Okay. Um, and of course, Wordsworth was taking it after Robert Southey. He was taking it after Robert Southey. Okay. Very good, very good, very good, very good. Now, this is actually an enlightenment philosophy, right? This is actually something which is related to enlightenment also. I think, therefore, I am. I think, therefore, I am. You know, there was this entire debate about whether there is human existence or is this just a dream? Is this just a big illusion? So, Descartes had come up with a concept. Descartes said, I think, therefore, I am. Because I'm capable of thinking, because I'm having a mind, therefore, I am. And you know, scientifically also it's proven, uh, for, 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 for example, like, you know, my, my father, he was in a comatose stage for three months. So clearly, uh, a brain dead person is actually equivalent to a dead person itself, right? I think, therefore, I am only because our brain is working. Only because our brain is working are we capable of thinking. Therefore, we are existing. Therefore, we know what to do. Therefore, now, after this, you, you people know that, okay, after 7 p.m., I have to have my food at 8 p.m. or uh, for some students who are have a class with me at eight o'clock you'll you'll come for the class for some of you you know so you you are able to you're capable of thinking therefore your existence is there Descartes, <coughs> Descartes was a person Schopenhauer very important Plato very very important Sartre very very important now when you're talking about all these uh, philosophers these philosophers are becoming extremely important especially after the enlightenment period post the enlightenment period you see that there is a proliferation of philosophy you know if you go and if you ask any philosophy student who's your friend they will tell you oh we also study Schopenhauer oh we also study Descartes oh we are also studying uh, like you know Plato oh we are also studying all these right so please keep that in mind that is where you know we are calling literature as a kind of an integrated or you can say interdisciplinary subject because these philosophers were impacting our literature writers these philosophers were impacting our literature writers that is something that is important okay now a question that you get is on the origin for example Schopenhauer Schopenhauer is having German origin he's a German thinker Schopenhauer is having German origins he's a German thinker they had given you a question twice in net North of Fry this was a question that has been asked in your net exam twice North of Fry is coming from North of Fry is a person who's associated with myth criticism and this particular thinker is coming from Canada. He is a Canadian critic. Not once but they have given you the same question twice. Northrop Fry was associated with your myth criticism is his origins are coming. So origins of thinkers are also important. Origins of thinkers are also important, right? So of course Arthur Schopenhauer is trying to tell you. Uh, he's also trying to tell you about a couple of important realities about the world. See, these philosophers are trying to give us direction. Their theories are trying to help us. Their theories are trying to help us. And here, of course, like, you know, Schopenhauer is very important uh, because he's telling us about the concept of will. He's telling us about the concept of will. He tells us that there are two types of wills, uh, which we'll, of course, be discussing at a later stage. So please remember that, you know, now is the time where whenever you are question, practicing a question, try looking at the options also. Because possibly next time they can give you a question on Schopenhauer, next time they can give you a question on Sartre. 
so now from now onwards because now we have reached march 2021 your target should also be to look at not just the works but also to look at the thinkers right but also to look at the thinkers also to look at the works of the thinkers that is also important that is also crucial that is also something that you must take a look at okay Okay, Kavita, I will show. I will show. Yes, 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 Poonam. Absolutely, the garrison mentality is getting introduced by him. Okay, fine. Uh, let's look at one more question, and then uh, we will like you know go on to the book. Speech acts is written by who is the writer of the book? Speech acts. Who is the writer of the book? Speech acts. <coughs> yes. Right. <coughs> Thank you, Rahul. <laughs> Rahul is absolutely right. Satra and Kierkegaard, existentialism, Kierkegaard, Schopenhauer. Um, you know, when you're talking about all these philosophy writers, they're extremely crucial. The book Speech Acts. So, who is the writer of the work Speech Acts? Who is the writer of the work Speech Acts? Yes, that's right, Yogesh. That's right. Very good. Tenzin has given the answer, but that's not the right answer. Tenzin has given the answer, but that is not the right answer. This is a very path-breaking work, actually. When you're talking about speech acts, right? When you're talking about speech acts, uh, see, uh, whenever you are talking about a uh, semiology, semiology uh, is very important. Study of speech is very important for three important reasons: structuralism. It gets uh, like you know, it's coming in structuralism. Also, part of new criticism and Russian formalism, as well as deconstruction. So it's better to know. It's better to know about all these aspects, right? It's always better to know about all these aspects because it it often becomes crucial, right? And this is a book that was written. This is a book that was written. Very very popular book. A very very popular book, right? Um, written by a very popular writer. Speech acts. Uh, once there was a subtitle also that had come. Essay in the philosophy of language. Essay in the philosophy of language. Essay in the philosophy of language. That is a subtitle. subtitle essay in the philosophy of language essay right the subtitle of speech acts an essay in the philosophy of language an essay in the philosophy of language in the philosophy of language in the philosophy of language uh, essay in the philosophy of language this is something which was the subtitle of your speech acts that you have to keep in mind so do remember that it became a path sell a path breaking book in terms of telling us the direction telling us an important aspect right uh, so so you you have to remember about semiology the books that are associated with it the books that are there most of you have uh, like you know some of you let's see at the classroom platform how many of you got it right very good very good very good why are some of you going with austin um uh, okay austin is like a popular favorite majority of you are going with austin all right uh, well here you have to keep in mind that john serrell uh, right uh, serrell is a person serrell is the writer of the book speech act so when we are talking about john serrell john serrell was a writer uh, and here you know uh, please keep this in mind that semiology uh, especially when you're trying to analyze the words how they are used that is where john serrell has actually played a very key role john serrell he's an american philosopher uh, so like i told you the origins are very important he's an american philosopher an american philosopher america was contributing a lot to the development of academia at that time and serrell was of course one of them uh, now here when we are talking about serrell serrell uh, was trying to explore the the relationship between mind language how mind is shaping the language how are we uh, like you know trying to produce uh, the the various kinds of speech patterns that are there that was of course his mo most important work that he was talking about right uh, now see please remember speech act speech acts uh, why uh, it it established his reputation was predominantly because he was telling us he was telling us about okay some of you have actually mentioned austin austin is known for something very different he is telling us about elocutionary act elocutionary act we'll talk about that okay he was giving us all the important notions that were being written by austin that were being written by uh, migley there was a person called migley at that time and you know what was happening what was happening 
happening was basically uh, what over here we can see Cyril is doing. Cyril is trying to tell us. Cyril is trying to introduce the concepts of electionary, electionary acts. Electionary acts was something that he was trying to introduce that became like, you know, a very important concept. Now, what do we mean by electionary acts? What are electionary acts? Um, electionary acts are basically associated with your speech patterns, with your speech acts. See, we will discuss about this when we are doing uh, a lot of semiology. We will talk about it even in language theories. Whenever we are talking about, I'll, I'll just explain it to you very briefly. See, for example, if I'm speaking right now, Okay, whatever I'm speaking, uh, you know, all, all of you can speak, you, you will be having energy, you will have a different speech altogether that will be produced. But if you will be tired, if you will be tired, then you know, your act, your act of elocution, your act of elocution will change a little. The speech act, even though you want to convey the same idea, even though you want to convey the same idea, imagine if you're sleepy, then your speech act will change drastically. There'll be some slurs that there will be some problems that you will encounter. Uh, keeping it very simple, these people are trying to tell us that, you know, there is a relationship between our mind and the language that is getting produced. There is a relationship. Mind is also controlling language. Of course, all thought was a nebula before the invention of language. Of course, every Everything was actually zero before the coming of language but at the same time we must not forget that mind also is extremely crucial for the development of language okay so that is something that you have to keep in mind Rahul but Cyril is the right answer okay Rahul is saying that you know it's given um no speech act this work, speech acts this work and the subtitle of the book as I've told you is Essay in the Philosophy of Language you can just see the book also, it's a beautiful book it is actually a part of some of you have uh, properly done, like we had a professor who was very strict about um, foundation of language at college therefore uh, it was a part uh, you know, which, which we had to read compulsorily so speech acts is a work which is written by John Settle okay, speech acts is a work which is written by John Settle uh, one of you had written, don't trust Wikipedia say actually, no, nothing like that, the Wikipedia is a very good source for all of you to revise, to be very honest, okay? Uh, but yeah, be a little careful, be a little careful. What you guys can do is whenever you are searching on internet, find we have searched a Wikipedia, all right? After Wikipedia, you can also go to the images section. You can also go to the news section, news also. There is a section on Google which says news. News is the most authentic version because, you know, obviously published news have very limited errors. So you can go for that also. So if you will type speech acts by John Serrell, you will be able to get it. If you will type speech acts by John Serrell and even in the answer key that was taken out by NET, by, by, the, uh, by the NTA, that time I think NTA was not there but whoever was a testing agency it's still on the website their answer is also John Settle okay their answer is also John Settle okay um but your spotter theory is a little different. Bharatya Hari's uh, spotter theory is a little different. We will talk about all these speech theories. There is the Pong Pong theory. We will talk about all of them. And they're very fun. There are a lot of fun uh, when you're talking about speech theories. Speech theories are a lot of fun. And they're so true. Speech theories are so true. Right? We will do that. No, Rahul, but here, here, the speech act, yes, you're right. Very good. Now, please understand everyone. Rahul is having a doubt. Austin is also writing about it. John Serrell is also writing about it. I understood now why most of you had answered Austin because you had done a Google search. Okay, I understood that. See, but what you have to keep in mind, but okay, whenever you are talking about speech act, Serrell was incorporating Austin's ideas also. Serrell was incorporating Austin's idea also. Is kuna amlo kari lenge. Mayi topic likhi I don't know why you people get a lot confused in speech acts. This is a very, very simple question. This is a very, very simple question uh, that, that I usually ask. So we will do speech theories, okay? We will do speech theories. It's, it's a very simple unit. Uh, we will do that. Because EAB Archkal na net AK question to aapko de nahi lag gaya. AK question they are definitely giving you on speech theories and it's very simple. And now they have given you language theories as a part of your course so you should know. Don't worry, we will do it, okay? Chalo, uh, ek last ye kar lete hai, fir let's just come on to the topic. The willing suspension of disbelief. This should be right for everyone. Everyone should get this right. Everyone should get this right. The term willing suspension of disbelief occurs in. The willing suspension of disbelief is occurring in. 
लिची सिंह ऑल ऑफ यू हैव चीटिंग ऑल ऑफ यू हु गूगल सर्च यू विल पता है आपको नेट में देर इज आउट दंड्रेड क्वेश्चन देर विल बी वन और टू क्वेश्चन दैट यू विल डेफिनेटली नॉट बी एबल टू सर्च इट ऑनलाइन ऑल्सो वन और टू विल ऑलवेज बी देर आई रिमेम्बर देर वॉज यू नो वेन वी वर वेन वी वर लाइक when we started writing net for the very first time and we were in college there was this conspiracy theory i don't want to name the place but there was a place in india which they they said that you know that place um uh, people just open wifi and then they are attempting their net exam and even these people never got 100 out of 100 because the net was not able to give you all the answers but i think then that that uh, area got blacklisted then no exams were conducted at that area ever yes that is true that is true very good very good biographia literaria willing system tension of disbelief is a term coming from biographia literaria biographia literaria is the most important work in your literary criticism you are having the topic of literary criticism in your course you are having the topic of literary criticism in your course biographia literaria biographia literaria is the most important work it is the most important work that you definitely have to keep in mind you will get a lot of questions coming in from here because scholarets uh, work in criticism is very decisive it's very well written very well curated telling you about fancy imagination telling you about important terms so it was very crucial it was very important okay now we will practice the remaining questions later let's very quickly come on to the modern age okay now whenever we are talking about the modern age there are a couple of pointers that i want you to keep in mind there are a couple of things that i want you to remember i'm just looking for my yeah um, yeah there are a couple of things that you have to keep in mind and what are these things that you have to be careful about whenever we talk about the modern period whenever we are talking about the modern period this period is going away from the convention morality uh, the decorum that was being followed by the victorian age period right and you know you have people like virginia woolf you are having people like virginia wolf who said what did they say they said that in and around 1910 the entire world changed the entire world changed the world changed dramatically modern age or the 20th century i was drinking water you know it's a very important lecture that we are starting so i thought i'll give a little bit of okay anyway Yes, yes, yes. Our question. Samuel Taylor Coleridge is also coming from the modern period. Okay. Now, ध्यान से सुनो. ठीक है. Modern age is a period which is inaugurating a complete shift from the previous times. For the very first time, people are questioning whether mankind is rational. People are questioning: Is there any brain over here inside or not? People are questioning the absurdity of engaging in large-scale self. created genocide people are saying this is a genocide genocide when an entire race is killed because of the first world war from 1914 to 1918 people were literally questioning whether there is any sanity whether there is any sanity that you are having in the minds of man that they are engaging in such kind of heinous crimes for the sake of power so here whenever we are talking about modern age there is a complete shift that we find from victorian values there is a complete shift that we find from victorian values we have the edwardian period we are having the edwardian period right we will just talk about that we we are having the edwardian period that is there okay then we are having the georgian period that continues georgian period that continues there after we can see that you know there is this period wherein the second world war is coming and this entire modern age right this entire modern age is trying to look at the chaos the utter chaos it is an age of anxiety it is an age of anxiety it is an age of frustration it is an age of fragmentation fragmentation it is an age of industrialization a proper industrialization where people are able to see the difference between capitalism and communism where people are able to see the difference between capitalism and communism modern era is ushering a completely different time the literature of the period each and every writer from em foster uh, rudyard kipling you know rudyard kipling is called the poet of the empire he is called an apologist of the empire and still after the death of his own child rudyard kipling is also criticizing empire Rudyard Kipling is also criticizing the entire project of imperialism because he loses his own child. He is losing his own child. He is losing his own son. 
to the war and thus he is questioning the absurdity of war modern age is an extremely significant age where you are able to see the two world wars you are able to see the two world wars that are telling you the absurdity they are telling you about the absurdity of people in power toba takes thing by sadat hasan manto talking about how crazy people are in power that they have partitioned a nation similarly the modern writers are saying so absurd is a society that they are participating in war they are participating in war which is leading to which is leading to a complete annihilation you can say of uh, of an entire generation so called okay we have the edwardian era we are having the edwardian era edwardian era is there the edwardian era this is very close to the victorian era very close to the victorian era and you know then we are having the georgian period edwardian and georgian period the initial georgian period is dealing with rustic life is dealing with countryside is dealing with countryside is dealing with rustic ideas that is what they are dealing with that is what they are dealing with okay Yeah, yeah, Vidya, don't worry. We will do that. Okay, we will do that. Actually, a lot of students come here for practicing because that is also really important. But don't worry, we will be focusing on that also. So don't worry. Okay, so please remember, whenever we are talking about modern age, whenever we are discussing about modern period, you have the Edwardian era, you have the Georgian period, you are having the Edwardian era, you are having the Georgian period, and you are also having the two world wars that are taking place. You are also having the two world wars that are taking place during this time. All right, that is. the context that is the context that you have to remember the edwardian era the edwardian era actually saw the flourishing of edwardian poetry edwardian poetry was being uh, like you know completely flourished but you could actually see a rigid class system you could see a rigid class system that was in place in england you could see the difference between the wealthy and the poor the elite and the poor there was a wide gap there was a wide gap but still this was a period of great social transformation this was a period of great social change that we were talking about that we are discussing about right so edwardian period uh, edward was the son of queen victoria who's coming to power the edwardian period actually saw the edwardian period actually saw in a way uh, like you know a continuation of victorian ideas but soon it got changed soon it got changed so after the victorian era you are having the edwardian era after the victorian era you are having the victorian era uh, so, sorry after the victorian era you are having the edwardian era now this edwardian society this edwardian society that we are talking about this edwardian society was actually a society that was continuing uh, that is the reason when we are talking about people like rudyard kipling rudyard kipling was a product of the edwardian society he rejected poet laureateship he rejected knighthood he rejected knighthood and he also rejected poet laureateship he also rejected poet laureateship okay so do keep this aspect in mind all right um yeah so sorry uh, okay so uh, here when you are talking about here when you are discussing please do keep this aspect in mind that when we are talking about when we are discussing about the edwardian society the edwardian society the edwardian society is a society which sees the products like rudyard kipling but there is also a product in the form of joseph conrad joseph conrad is very critical joseph conrad is absolutely critical thomas hardy is also very pessimistic they are also writing during this period uh so there is a sense of nostalgia there is a sense of nostalgia where people are looking back at the time that they have lost where people are looking back at the time that they have lost people like em foster will come during this edwardian georgian period people like joseph conrad will come here people like rudyard kipling will come here people like thomas hardy will come here that is of course important please remember modernism in literature predominantly sees various kinds of artistic movements that are taking place art nouveau art nouveau art nouveau nouveau like you know new forms of art were developing new forms of art were developing fendicicle turn of the century fendicicle turn of the century turn of the century that is fendicicle so new kinds of movements were developing new kinds of changes were being seen okay uh uh 
no cosmic lemon just check it just check it that is what some of you had said that it will be upgraded i think there are 10 handouts that you will get before midnight okay there are 10 pdfs that you will be having okay cosmic lemon there are 10 pd are you are you a student just check that also maybe because the validity might be there okay lakshmi rigid class system means that the poor were getting poorer and the rich were becoming richer because of opportunities a rigid class system uh, you could see that you know there were places meant for the rich and elite people where poor were not very uh, like you know it wasn't easy for them to come in uh, if you guys have seen the movie titanic you you know titanic was actually written during the edwardian georgian period it's trying to represent the time of the edwardian georgian period only uh, if you see if you've seen the movie titanic you will be able to see that you know uh, you have this you are you are having this entire class of people who are at a different uh, like you know different compartment all together they have got these beautiful uh, looking rooms and set up in the in the ship titanic and then you know there is a poorer working class lot rigid rigid hierarchies people from the poorer sec sections cannot come and join the people who are there in the richer sections so rigid absolutely rigid they are following it they are following the hierarchies that oh you are rich you are poor right so that is there all right so do keep this aspect in mind that is important now some of them are called as edwardian realists some writers are called as your edwardian realists what are we calling them some of these writers are considered to be edwardian realists like rudyard kipling rudyard kipling is uh, is like you know your edwardian realist he was born in bombay he was born in bombay right uh, his father was of course so he was born in india that is what you have to keep in mind right he is trying to innovate short stories so important from your short story perspective also he is a friend of henry james he was a friend of henry james all right he is writing the phantom rickshaw v wilky winky uh, mary postage he was a short story writer as well he was a short story writer as well he is also trying his hand on poetry barrack room ballads and other verses barrack room ballads and other verses these questions come directly these questions are coming directly he was a supporter of imperialism and colonialism till he his son passed away supporter of imperialism and colonialism he was a great supporter of imperialism and colonialism he was supporting imperialism and colonialism in a very big way in a massive way right he was he was and earlier he was rejecting earlier he was rejecting you know earlier he was rejecting he declined he declined poet laureate ship he declined poet laureate ship and knighthood but he was the first english language writer to get the nobel prize he rejected poet laureate ship he said and this is a direct question that you get this is a direct question that you're getting in your exam that which is the writer which is a 20th century writer who rejects poet laureate ship and knighthood uh, rudyard kipling is the one rudyard kipling is the one he's called the poet of the empire he's famously called as the poet of the empire his famous name is the poet of the empire right yes gulista he is known for his jingoistic tendencies okay he was criticized for blatant racism by orwell also orwell says he is a prophet of the british imperialism prophet of the british imperialism he was considered to be the prophet of british imperialism right you can clearly see that you can clearly see that his early editions of book had swastika swastik right the swastik which which also became like you know a kind of a symbol for the nazi party an inverted swastik and an elephant carrying a lotus flower an elephant carrying a lotus flower which became a symbol of luck all right once the nazis came to power and appropriated the swastika kipling ordered that it should no longer be used in his books but earlier he was using earlier in his books he was using the symbol but when the nazi party people came to power and they used an inverted swastika as a symbol he rejected the symbol he rejected the symbol So the first English writer to get the Nobel Prize, the person who rejected poet laureate ship and knighthood, the poet of the empire, prophet of British imperialism, had swastik and uh, the elephant with the lotus flower as his lucky symbol. Swastik as well as the elephant with the lotus flower as his lucky symbol. Very famous for our Mowgli, the Jungle Book that we are talking about, right? We all remember the song uh, "Chaddi Pehen Ke Phool Khila Hai," right? So that is something which we owe it to Rudyard Kipling, right? So whenever we are talking about, whenever we are discussing about this very famous character of Mowgli, which I don't know if your generation is aware about, my generation actually saw uh, Mowgli, right? Um, so here, when you are talking about here, when you are discussing about, okay? Uh, 
<laughs> Yogesh, whenever you're here in Delhi, let me know. We will gift you with like, you know, a coffee hamper because Yogesh poor chap is telling everyone with a copy pasted version, right? That go over here for the library and, uh, and don't worry. Uh, we ha- we are up- like, you know, now you'll get a lot of material coming on your way through the library. Okay. Now Kipling here, but please use the library very judiciously. Do not just download everything and then you will be stuck. Finish one material, download the next. Finish one material, download the next. Finish one material, download the next. Don't just keep on downloading because then it will create a lot of stress that, oh my God, I have so much to read. Okay, so just download it, uh, uh, you know, make it like, uh, make, a, make a promise that till the time I don't finish the first download, I will not download the second document or I will not download the second PDF or I will not download the second audio video, whatever is there in the library. Okay, so do remember that. Yes, okay. Akarshan also saw Mowgli. Okay, right. So Kipling, when we are talking about Kipling, Kipling is writing the Jungle Book. Kipling is writing the Jungle Book. Jungle Book is telling us moral tales. It's telling us about moral tales. Oh, I, I forgot about the time. Okay, and here, please remember, you are having Mowgli, the character of Mowgli, who's raised by wolves, right, in the Indian jungle. Riki Tiki Tavi, Riki Tiki Tavi, the story of heroic mongoose. Uh, you also had Tomia of the Elephants, the tale of a young elephant bundler, handler. Uh, the second jungle book was also there. <coughs> right? Kim is very important work. Kim was actually a kind of a spiritual building Sruman, also, you can say. Okay, Kim is an orphan in British India. It is set on against the backdrop of the great game, the political conflict between Russia, Britain, uh, in the Central Asia. It is uh, like, you know, a picaresque novel about Kimbal Hara, Kimbal Hara's picaresque tale. Very, very important. And they have given you questions and details from Kim. They have actually asked you questions from in detail when we are talking about Kim. All right. Whenever we are discussing about Kim, they've asked you specific questions also from here. All right. Uh, now, before we go further, before we go further, what, what I'll do is your homework for today. First of all, what is your homework for today? Try to, uh, now is the time. Okay. Most of you were asking, now is the time for all the people who have Rottelich, for all the po- people who have William J. Long, for all the people who have Edward Albert, try to read the introduction part of modernism. Try to read the introduction part of modernism. I'll give you a small little quiz tomorrow also based on that. Okay, read. What is your homework for today from 7 p.m. class? Your homework today is read the introduction part of modern age whichever book you're following you're following Pramod K. Nair, you're following orient black swan you're you're following uh paul poplowski you're following edward albert whichever book you are reading okay just go through the modern age uh, introduction and also try to read a little on your edwardian writers edwardian writers okay edwardian novelists or edwardian realists as they are called they are called edwardian realists right you can read up on these writers like Conrad, read a little on them. We will, of course, be discussing them. Kipling, all right, uh, E.M. Foster, to get a sense of what these people are writing. E.M. Foster, read a little on them and come for the next class, okay? All right, uh, we will. <laughs> Harshakal's like Shinshan ke papa, uh, ha, yeah. Ohara. All right, we'll, we'll stop over here. If there are any doubts, if there are, yes, 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 Vaishali. Vaishali from the classroom. Uh, okay, Ananya seen Titanic is absolutely right, is absolutely right that uh, it's having elements of Orientalism. And please look at Kim also and come. We will continue from here only. We will continue from here only because Kim is a very important work. Kim is a very, very important work and you've got questions in detail that have come from Kim. So we will cover Kim also properly. Okay, we will cover Kim also properly. I will give you the handout. Uh, Sorry, I will give you, uh, I'll share the PDF with all of you. But st- still, do make sure that you're looking at these. Okay? All right. Thank you so much for joining in. I will see you guys later at 10 p.m. Bye. God bless. Okay, take care.